Hello friends, this video on is matter around us pure part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Understand the physical and chemical chain. Let's see the classification of the pure substance now. So this part we have seen, the matter is classified as mixture and pure substance. The mixture is further classified as heterogeneous and homogeneous. Heterogeneous was suspension, homogeneous was colloidal and suspension. This is part we have seen. Let's see the pure substance. The pure substance is further classified into elements and compounds. And elements are further classified into metals, non-metals, metalloids, and compounds can be organic, inorganic, covalent, ionic. So let's first study elements and compound. Let's first study the elements. See, all these chemistry has progressed mostly in, in the last uh, 500 years. Prior to that, the chemistry was not popular. It was not very famous. In fact, in 1661, 1661, this guy Boyle, Robert Boyle, he was the first to introduce this term element. Prior to 1661, this term element was not there. He coined this term element. But he could not give a correct definition of the element. He, he just, he was doing experiments and he thought this is the pure form of substance. But he could not give actually a very pure, uh, good definition of element. He coined this term element because a lot of time, a lot of elements were getting discovered, new, new things were getting discovered and he gave this term element. In fact, in 1700s, 1760s type, this guy Lavoisier, I don't remember the exact time, 1760s, that time this guy Lavoisier, he defined the element and he defined the element as basic form of matter. So as per his definition, element is the basic form of matter that cannot be broken down that cannot be broken down into simpler substance into simpler substance by chemical reaction so for example if you take gold if you take hydrogen, if you take carbon, if you take nitrogen, these things you actually can't break further. See, common salt has NaCl, you can break into sodium and chlorine. But once you get sodium, can you break it further? You can't break. So the definition is, it is a basic form of matter that cannot be broken down into simpler substance. Right? That is element. If you see, all these elements are listed in the periodic table. And out of these, some 92, I think, yeah till here run to 92 these are natural and post 92 they are called trans uranium or trans uranius i don't remember the term exactly these are all uh, man made they are prepared in the lab by bombarding some particles with these but they are all man made but 92 are naturally occurring because once you increase the atomic number uh, the stability of this uh, element decrease and we will study about these in the higher classes why we don't have more than uh, 92 naturally occurring elements okay so as per today there are huge number of elements and out of that 98 not huge 100 plus 100 or something 98 are natural and other are man-made these elements hydrogen helium lithium typically whatever you see in periodic table is element let's understand periodic table list down all the elements and elements are nothing but the basic form of matter that cannot be broken further into simpler substance by any chemical reaction okay and based on the property metal can be further classified i mean element can be further classified as metals non-metals and metalloid so we'll see typically this side we have metals we'll see further this side we have non-metals and somewhere here we have metalloids i just drew a, a rough figure but actually this is the trend the, these are metals on the left hand side, right side we have non-metals and somewhere in the middle we have some metalloids. Okay, silicon, boron, those are examples of metalloids. Now we'll discuss what are these metals, non-metals and metalloids. But to understand this, elements are the basic form of matter that cannot be broken further into simpler substance by any chemical reaction. This definition came in 1700s. That means the all these uh, advancement in chemistry happened in the last few years only. So let's understand what is metal. See, metal typically have shine. So if you see metal, you think of metal, think of gold. Gold has shine. 
right? And uh, or think of silver as well. In fact, ninety percent of the metal are silvery color. Only few of them are golden color. Copper and gold. These two are golden. Most of the metal, if you see, are silver. If you take aluminium, if you take zinc, if you take silver, if you take sodium, if you take mercury, you take most of the uranium. Lost most of the metals. Actually, let's take these metals. Most of the metals are silver in color. Potassium. Most of them are silver in color. Ninety percent. Talk about silver. You see, they conduct electricity, right? So first things they have shine that we have seen. That's why they are used for making jewelry. Okay, they are mostly silvery gray or golden color. They conduct heat and electricity, and that's why they are used in wires. They are ductile. They are ductile. That's why you can draw into wires. So they are ductile. So you can draw. Into wire by hammering or something. They are malleable, and thus you can make thin sheets, right? So they are malleable. This is for ductile. Thin sheets. This is they are good conductor of heat. I told, good conductor of heat, and that's why. If you see, they are used in uh, pans, fine pans. They are good conductor of electricity. That's why they are used in wires and electrical equipments. So let me write here as well. Good conductor of electricity as well. They are sonorous. When you hit it with some other metal, it forms sound, and that's why they are used for bells. So that property is called sonorous. They have different sound. Some people actually by the sound can make out which metal it is. Okay, sound when it hit, and uh, mercury is the only metal that is liquid. Mercury, this is if you think of mercury, think of thermometer. In thermometer, you have mercury here. This mercury. So mercury, since it is the only metal, it is an exception. Mercury is only liquid metal. It is still. All other metals are solid. Okay. Is not mercury is the only liquid metal. So this is all about metal. They have shine, they are ductile, they are malleable, they are sonorous, they conduct heat and electricity, and mostly they are solid. Talk about the non-metal. They have variety of colors. You see, these are for phosphorus. Three different colors of phosphorus. Okay, this is sulfur, yellow color. This again, if you see, carbon is black color. This iodine is the more, all the more dark color, and if you see, uh, this is bromine, red color. Right? This is chlorine. So they have different color. This is chlorine, I think. So they have different colors. You see, they start from yellow, red to black, again dark yellow. There's so many colors. There's so variety of colors. Variety of colors. And they are poor conductor of heat and electricity. They are not good conductor. They are poor conductor. Okay, they don't have shine. No shine. They don't have shine. They are dull actually. They don't have. Uh, uh, they don't create sound also. So no sonority. If you want to imagine. Can you imagine heating two coal pieces and you you feel that metallic sound? No, it doesn't give that kind of sound, right? So it it is not malleable. You can't uh, think of non-metal. Think of coal. Can you create a thin sheet out of coal? No. So it is non-malleable. Can you create thin wire off of coal? No. So it is non-ductile also. And they are typically soft. Coal is typically soft. They are not hard like metal. So the property is totally different. Metal is hard. This is soft. Metal is ductile. It is non-ductile. Metal is malleable. It is non-malleable. Metal is sonorous. Sonorous. It is non-sonorous. Metal has sign. It has no sign. Metal is good conductor of heat and electricity. It is. It is not good conductor of heat and electricity. Metal is generally ninety percent silver and very few golden. But here they have variety of colors. So in all the properties, metal and non-metal are totally different. They are 
totally anti let's see a third type of metal metalloids they are somewhere between metal and non metal so this metal is on the left hand side they have different property non metal is on the right hand side they have different property somewhere between them is we have metalloid they have property which is almost some property of metal some property of non metal we'll not discuss much about metalloid example i can give you boron silicon germanium these are typical example of metalloid silicon is used to make chips boron is used to make boron glasses for the lab and germanium is also used mostly in that field electronics field all the computers have the silicon let's see some facts about this metal the fact is the number of metal known to us is more than uh, 100 so 100 plus 115 plus metals are known sorry elements 115 plus elements are known to us okay out of that i told metal 98 is natural atomic number 198 is natural other are all man made in the labs hydrogen to uranium is called natural other are man made and most of these are solid most of these are solid only 11 elements are gas at stp and two is liquid at stp two is liquid one is mercury we have seen and the other is bromine apart from that most are you can do your maths uh, mostly here 79 79 is solid and i'm talking about the natural one artificial one again solid and most of them they are so they are produced in such a tiny form that their state cannot be determined let's talk about the natural one natural one 79 is solid 11 is gas 2 is liquid okay this is the key facts about the elements thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attend free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again